I'm Reiner Schwartz, uh, born in Europe, early 1948. I'm a multimedia communicator and uh, coming to understand myself as an eternal optimist. I don't think perfect happiness is, uh, is available. Uh, conceptually or uh, realistically in any way. I like to, to think of myself as fearless. I have thought for a long time that the notion of fear is but a notion, you know, that if we're comfortable within our own skins, uh, there's really nothing to be afraid of. So I, I like to live by that idea. If something scares me, I'll let you know. You know, I shy away from top ten lists. E even when asked for, for the best hundred albums of a, of a lifetime, I, I will refuse to answer because it's a broader list than that. I have difficulty with judgment. The greatest people are many. I've had the good fortune of rubbing shoulders with some of our heroes, some of the pop stars and some of the, the cultural contributors, the icons of, of our time, my time. And I've, I've found something to derive from all of those experiences and from all of those people. I, I tend to find, it's the eternal optimist thing in me. I find good in most everything. You know, if you had asked me this 10 years ago, I, I would have had a, an answer, and, and 20 years ago, possibly a different answer. Today, I'm thinking, I'm beginning to enjoy myself and accept myself to an extent that if anything bothers me, it is that I'm still more apologetic about being myself than, than I would like to be. Arrogance is something that, that bothers me about people. Arrogance is, is another side of narrow-mindedness, I think. And, and it also goes hand in hand with pretension. And I, I, I think we overrate ourselves based on false values. And so, so arrogance comes out of that and that uh, you know, when, when, I, when I run into that, I'm cautious with people. I like a little bit of humility and, and a down-to-earth feeling coming from, from a, a person. I am indulgent and excessive uh, with just about everything that opens a, a new door that gives me a chance to step forward, to make change, to grow, to experience something fresh and new and, and, and reviving. So, I, in other words, I'm a sensation junkie. <laughs> That's not a difficult question for me. Uh, I've thought a lot about that, because we attempt to encourage each other and boast uh, our, our virtues. We encourage each other by recognizing our virtues, et cetera, et cetera. I think generosity is highly overrated because it is often done with ulterior motives. Be it a tax receipt, be it, I, I better do this or they're going to think I'm a real schmuck. Uh, I've got to give. We have to share. I'll find a way to make it justifiable, even though we don't, I don't think, calculate that. We help people sometimes to avoid our own problems. My most difficult challenges on a daily basis are maintaining myself handling the routine activities of survival, eating, washing, laundry, uh, the domestic stuff, uh, paying bills, keeping a schedule, the clock, the calendar, none of it makes any sense anymore to me. It used to be bad when I was a kid. I was always distracted, absent-minded professor, they called me. Now I am just devoted to what it is that I'm doing and what is happening in the moment. So it's, it's about being in the moment, which can, can cost uh, the practical aspect of life. It can tax the business of getting through a day. I'll go so far as to tell you that, that my paradise is in the tropics. I can't tell you where it is, because I do intend to reside there someday. And I would rather be anonymous and, and lost in that environment than, than somewhere uh, in the public records uh, telling people where I am. 
I was about 12 or 13 years old at Union Station in Montreal in the big foyer of this cathedral-like room. And what I perceived to be a beatnik artist type walked by. He had sandals on, as I do now, and, and raggedy jeans and a sweater, and he had a goatee. And I said, this is my guy. If and when more than one musician is or are in harmony uh, and working together well, playing music uh, is ultimately as beautifully satisfying as good sex, as a beautiful sexual encounter, and or sitting alone or with a friend in nature, in the wilds. Until recently, I had one regret, and that was that I had not returned to playing drums. I was a prolific drummer as a kid. I retired for many, many years, 30 and I'm back, and I love it. That, that's it, other than that, I'm just disappointed, you know, with, with, with me and on some levels in the world, but I no regrets. I own a um, late 60s model, custom Les Paul guitar, a Gibson, and I love it. T two, two things, uh, two things uh, are very, very uh, there about me, I'm told. My, uh, my motor mouth and my hair. Success is, is ultimately a very simple thing. Uh, if the goal is to resolve one's needs and desires and, and hopes and dreams in a lifetime, then success is to achieve a level of comfort and respect and love of oneself where it's possible to actually continue forward motion in that direction. That's success. I am deliriously alive and eager to do the many things I have not yet done. If I could have the, the impact of substantial change on the world and know upfront that it was possible, I would allow for a incubation period. Civilization, as one, takes time out to refresh our memories, gain and garner new insights and education into where we are at today and where we're gonna be at in a blink. I would take the opportunity to try for one more shot at collective consciousness practically applied. Everything depends on how you look at things, and it became a motto. I would step into the mirror literally from time to time throughout for many, many years, and I still do it occasionally, and say to myself, depends on how you look at it. I think the gods would have me come back as a ready-to-go, ready-made philanthropist.